WFRV Local 5, your local election headquarters presents an election 2020 special. I've asked for the entire Wisconsin congressional delegation's help to get this bill into law. We're going out in force, out into the streets to knock on doors and talk. Tonight, the 8th Congressional District of 8. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Tom Zolaski. And I'm Michelle McCormack. This is the 8th Congressional District debate between incumbent Mike Gallagher and State Representative Amanda Stuck. Tonight they will have one hour to tell you why they deserve your vote on November the 3rd. And with that, let's meet them. First, Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher, who was elected into Congress in 2016. He's a Marine veteran serving in Iraq and the Middle East. He worked in the private sector at a company in Green Bay prior to being elected. He serves on the House Armed Services, Transportation and Infrastructure Committees. And Democrat Amanda Stuck. She was elected as a representative to the State Assembly 57th District in 2015. She was an aide to former Congressman Steve Kagan. She has also worked with multiple nonprofits like Habitat for Humanity, and the Red Cross, and she chaired multiple committees, including the Committee on Energy and Utilities and Housing and Real Estate. Here are the ground rules for tonight's debate. The debate will last 60 minutes. The order of opening and closing statements was determined before the debate by a coin toss. Each candidate will have 45 seconds to give an opening statement. There will be three types of questions. One focused on the 8th Congressional District specifically. Second, national topics. And third, questions from our local five viewers. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer each question. They will also have 30 seconds for a rebuttal if they so choose. And each candidate will have 90 seconds for their closing statement. We begin first with opening statements from our candidates. After a coin toss, Congressman Mike Gallagher will go first. Congressman. Thank you. Uh, it seems like another lifetime, but it was around this time last year that my wife Anne and I found out that she was pregnant with our baby daughter, Grace. Grace was born just down the road at Bellin Hospital, and I will always be grateful to the nurses and the doctors who provided such excellent care for my wife and baby daughter in the midst of this terrible pandemic. We are lucky to have such unsung heroes right here in Northeast Wisconsin, and so I just wanted to begin tonight by saying thank you. Thank you to the healthcare workers, thank you to the firefighters, thank you to the cops for everything you've done in this crisis to keep us safe. Thank you, Congressman. Now, Representative Amanda Stuck for your opening statement. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight and this opportunity to talk about the issues that are important. I would like to start off by saying that certainly Mike Gallagher is a smooth talker. And what I would encourage viewers to do is to watch what he does, not what he says. And through the course of this debate, I will point out many areas where Mike Gallagher says one thing and then does another. And I would like to start off with one example of that right away. So Congressman Gallagher has talked a lot about term limits and is now running for his third term. For me, this really is about the people of Northeast Wisconsin. This is not a stepping stone. And I commit to serving not more than two terms should I win and to not running for a higher office. Can Congressman Gall Gallagher do the same thing? And we thank you both for your opening statements. And now our first round of questioning for the evening. We begin first with Representative Mike Gallagher. The first question, is Wisconsin and the rest of the nation doing enough to combat COVID-19? Representative Gallagher may answer first. Well, in the Marine Corps, we have a saying, ride to the sound of the guns. And it means that no matter what the crisis, you confront the danger with courage in order to protect the people you love. And so when it became clear early on in this crisis that the Chinese Communist Party was covering up the full extent of COVID-19, I knew that I had to act. I was the first member of the U.S. House of Representatives to warn of the pandemic. I criticized my own party for not being aggressive enough and warned that we needed to immediately implement a travel ban from China. And then when the pandemic hit Wisconsin, I completely suspended my campaign, gave away my campaign funds to local food shelters in need, and also worked across the aisle with Wisconsin Democrat Mark Pocan to get access to life-saving drugs. I secured a donation of 100,000 masks from the government of Taiwan and held a PPE drive for first responders and healthcare workers that need that equipment. But of course, we need to do more. Because riding to the sound of the guns means that you confront challenges head on, 
you lean into them and you look for bipartisan solutions. And going forward, that's what we need to do. We just got a surge testing site in the Fox River Valley. We're working to get another one right here in Green Bay. We have over $130 billion in unspent PPP money that we should immediately get out there to our small businesses that need that support. I also joined 33 of my colleagues in, this, in the House of Representatives, Democrats and Republicans, requesting Speaker Pelosi immediately reconvene Congress so we can pass a bipartisan bill that's common sense, that pairs liability protections for our businesses and our nonprofits that need that help with targeted assistance to schools and hospitals. Because this is a virus. It does not discriminate based on whether you're a Democrat or Republican. We're in this together. We need to work together. All right, thank you, Congressman. State Representative Stuck, your answer? The answer is very clearly no, we are not doing enough. We are a hot spot right now. We have I think the number's up to 24 people alone in Appleton that have died. Students have had their teachers die right here in Northeast Wisconsin. We are not doing enough. And here's another perfect example to point out where Congressman Gallagher says one thing but does another because he actually voted against the family's first coronavirus package, which was the first bill that was passed that had expanded testing and that had food assistance programs in there and that had paid leave for families that need, needed to leave because of the coronavirus and take time off. He voted against that. So it really is ridiculous for him to sit here and say that he supports first responders when he actually voted against the very things that would help ease their burden right now. And then he was at a large public gathering, no mask. There are pictures of this. I'm not making this up. You can see this. He is there with no mask, shaking hands. He was out there filming videos, complaining about how he couldn't run on his favorite running trail while people were losing their job and dying because of this virus. We are not doing enough, and it is because of the lack of leadership that we have representing us right now. That is for the national level, but uh, Representative Stuck, if we could get your answer when it comes to state responsibility in addressing the pandemic. So absolutely not. The state has not done enough. We just saw reports about who we, we are the laziest legislature. We have not met since February to address this. And as Governor Evers has tried to take action because the legislature won't act to move because Rob and Voss will not let us meet, Republicans have just attacked him, bringing the issue to court, not even fighting the science, simply fighting the partisanship of it, trying to say whether or not he has the power to do it. There's no debate on the science and what we need to do. This has become a political football when it shouldn't be. There's no reason people dying should be something that is a partisan issue. And it is a shame, and shame on the Wisconsin Republicans and Robin Voss for not letting us do more. Congressman Gallagher, you have a rebuttal? Uh so as regards to the family's first bill or the first coronavirus bill, I've actually never seen anything like it. It was introduced a little after midnight and less than 30 minutes later, we were voting on it and no one read the bill. And no one considered the obvious fact that if you force small businesses to provide upwards of 10 to 12 weeks of leave while exempting big businesses, this is how DC works, those businesses are likely to have to lay off their employees. And that's what we saw immediately after that historic number of unemployment claims. How does that help someone get leave or benefits if they don't have a job? Representative Stuck, do you wish to respond? Sure. So what I'll just point out is the economy is in a slump because of the Trump administration's lack of responding to this and their unwillingness to take this seriously, supported by Mike Gallagher. That's why the economy is in a slump. We move on now to our next question. Through the pandemic, we have seen several businesses close their doors, not just temporarily, but some permanently. How do you plan to help those businesses who are right now just hanging on, barely surviving, and how would you help to encourage new business? Representative Stuck, your answer first. We know that we need to do another second or stimulus package because there are not enough funds from the first program through the PPE loans. A lot of those funds have dried up. They've all been used up, but businesses are still hurting. So we do need to do a second stimulus package and one that is aimed at the small businesses. What we saw with the first package is that NBA teams were getting funds, big businesses that didn't need it, not truly the small businesses on Main Street that really need it. So we do need to do a second package and we need to do something for those people that are unemployed right now because of the lack of leadership we have right now. And we need to make sure they have access to unemployment, which Mike Gallagher voted against in the first package that he voted against. 
we need to make sure those families have something so that they can actually go to those businesses and buy their products and services in the meantime until they can get back to work. And the biggest thing we need to do is get through this by following the science and having real leadership that takes this seriously and follows what the scientists and doctors tell us to do. Representative Gallagher, your response to the same well, question. Well, I think it's in addition to that big bipartisan framework I laid out before, I think it starts by all of us doing our part, wearing masks where appropriate, social distancing wherever possible, and doing the small things like washing your hands. And I think that's a small price for us to pay to keep our small businesses open. Just think of, think of your favorite restaurant in your neighborhood. Or think of one of my favorite restaurants. If you go to the southernmost part of the district in Chilton, you'll see Hildy's Deli, Deli and Bakery. Uh, Hildy, the owner, has a phenomenal story. She came to Northeast Wisconsin from Romania in the 1970s. She's been in the restaurant business since she was 15 years old. And she opened up her own place in 2011. And it is famous for its roasted chicken, the best in Wisconsin. It's big handmade pizzas and the fact that 95% of our products are from Wisconsin. During the shutdown, Hildy, like so many small businesses in Northeast Wisconsin, stepped up and did her part to protect her employees and protect her customers. She even increased the amount of food she bought from local farms to help them out during the crisis. And she gave away food to families in need in Chilton. Going forward, I think we should take inspiration from that and have a bottom-up strategy that provides a business like Hildy's with the best guidance that she needs, but also adapts that guidance to the unique needs of every single community. Because while an unelected government bureaucrat may not think that a business like Hildy's is essential, all work is essential for the person doing the work. And again, if you go closer in Green Bay here, you go to my grandma's favorite restaurant, Alloway Cafe, they will tell you that the PPP loan program was essential to keeping them in business, keeping their people employed. And as I said before, we have $130 billion just sitting there waiting to get into the game that we can get out there right now. We should immediately reconvene Congress and pass a PPP loan extension. Our next question of the evening. According to the Wisconsin Agriculture Department, the state lost a record number, 819 dairy farms in 2019. That's 10% due to Chinese tariffs, combined with a 50% cut in dairy exports to China. The federal government rolled out a bailout program, but milk producers say it's not enough. How would you answer them? Congressman Gallagher, you may answer first. Uh, well, I was out in Kiwanee County uh, the other day at a Pagels Ponderosa Dairy. It's a third generation farm. It's actually Wisconsin's largest privately owned family farm. And there I met the fourth generation, uh, a brilliant 11 year old girl named Jalen Pagel. And I asked her, Jalen, would you want to go into the family business farming? And she said, yes, but I would like eventually to have your job because ultimately I want to become president of the United States. And first of all, I think if a Wisconsin dairy woman were president of the United States, we would be in great hands. And so Jalen has my vote. But I think that shows how important it is to get the next generation interested in agriculture, because this is a cutting edge industry that's leveraging AI, robotics, cutting edge science. This is why I just introduced a bill with Wisconsin Democrat Ron Kind to establish a dairy commission to take a long term look at the industry with that generation in mind. The second thing we need to do is to continue to open foreign markets that our Wisconsin dairy farmers can sell to. This is why USMCA was such a huge win for Wisconsin, because it opened up the Canadian market. Going forward, we need to make sure that not only that Canada complies with the agreement, but that we use it as a framework for further future fair trade deals. Finally, I think Wisconsin has an opportunity to lead the world when it comes to clean agriculture and clean dairy. That is why I am so proud that we have successfully protected the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative for the last four years in Congress, because at the end of the day, it was actually Jalen's grandfather, John, a great man who we lost too soon that said it best. Farmers are environmentalists first. Farmers are environmentalists first. We can protect the environment while still maintaining our status as America's dairy land. And Representative Stuck, your message to our farmers tonight. Well, first of all, I'd like to say to our farmers, thank you for all the work you do. You certainly are the backbone of Wisconsin. And unfortunately, you have not been getting the support you need from your federal government. And this is another perfect time to point out 
where you should watch what Congressman Gallagher does and not what he says. Because he talks about opening up markets when it is because of his support of the Trump administration that markets have dried up and gone away that won't come back for our farmers because of their failed trade wars. And it was that bailout that they tried to buy off the farmers with because of their failed policies that failed Wisconsin farmers. We know that money went to farmers in Georgia and that farmers right here in Wisconsin, they got the shorthand of that deal. They didn't get as much as the farmers down by the secretary's home state. The secretary came in here to our state, told our farmers to go big or go home. And where has Mike Gallagher been? Totally silent on that not pushing back on the administration on their failed policies, not pushing back on the secretary for saying that to our farmers right here. What I would say is that our farmers do need markets. That's what they want. They don't want handouts, they want markets. So we need real trade policies, not these failed trade wars. And we also need to look at things like a farmer's bill of rights. So farmers have things like the right to repair. And again, that we address these monopolies that they face that jack up prices. So we do need leadership for our farmers. I'd like a rebuttal. Of course, Congressman. Uh, well, it was the Trump administration that actually renegotiated NAFTA and got USMCA. And I was proud that we actually passed that on an overwhelmingly bipartisan basis. And then I actually wrote an op-ed recently in the Wall Street Journal that said we can build on that with a gold standard trade agreement with the United Kingdom and then a, a free trade agreement with Taiwan. That to me is an obvious slam dunk for whatever administration wins a week from now. But I would just like to highlight the work that Feeding America has done with the Farmers to Families program, passing out boxes of food to families in need across Northeast Wisconsin an incredible organization and a big part of our CARES Act funding. And Representative Stuck, do you wish to follow? Nope, I'm fine. Well, that ends our first round of questioning. Coming up next, we are going to ask our candidates about state and national issues. We'll be right back after this two-minute break. Stay with us.